the best way to describe PAX this weekend was day one ended. So day one being Friday, we flew in Thursday early. We were there all day Thursday. We did day one. Um, and then we were out on Friday night at an event. And somebody said, wow, that was a hell of a day one. Uh, I wonder what day two is going to bring. And I looked at them and I thought, isn't today Sunday? I thought it was day three. <laughs> Not day two, day three. So, um, how much, um, how much video do you have to go through? Uh, so we did three unfiltered videos. One of those may get broken up into two videos. I'm not sure yet because we, um, ended up, we were supposed to talk about day two. We ended up derailing and talking about an event, another event we went to during PAX, um, Hmm. like a little mixer thing we went to. So I'm not a hundred percent certain uh probably a good like hour and a half and then i have an interview probably got two hours of video all right nothing like nothing too catastrophic i i opted to just stop carrying camera equipment around at one point so uh we didn't end up um we didn't end up like uh, shooting a lot of stuff i have have some pictures i gotta edit um i think all my pictures are gonna go to stream arizona though um i'm gonna have them post them because it's less our style of of photography so okay and i was doing kind of double duty at pax west no that's fine so you know, um, i'm trying to find my post i just made for this so i can there it is uh so hmm. yeah it was it was an interesting thing um interesting exhausting experience and i'm tired um i'm gonna perk my energy up as we go but right now i am just like whoosh and then last night was a hell of a way to fucking end pax let me tell you so let's find out about all that because um welcome to constantly calibrating everybody we are here um it's a classic show tonight because reasons uh josh is with me back from pax west and we're gonna talk about that and everything he did yeah it's uh it's gonna be quite an interesting uh <laughs> interesting take it's gonna be fun kind of like going God. fun and different going through things without justin here because uh, i went with justin but uh he had a situation, so the just for reference, if you weren't here during like the preamble kind of stuff, uh, Justin and I left our hotel at 3.30 a.m. Pacific. He had a 5.30 a.m. flight, but due to layovers and stuff like that, he had like almost nine hours of travel, I think. I think he got home like... <laughs> Did he buy like the, the $10 ticket that takes you to 15 different states? No, he only had one <laughs> stop, but it was like a three and a half hour layover. Oh, um, man. it was really hard finding flights for this. Like it was so, the only reason we left as ridiculously early as we did on Monday. Um, cause the original plan was we were going to go to PAX in the morning Monday for like two hours. Uh, cause Mondays are really awesome to be, be there. Cause it's not a lot of people there. Um, and you right. get to really explore better. Uh, but then it ended up being a case of, uh, for me, I think it was $180 more for the ticket to to do that and i'd have two stops and then for him it was like four hundred dollars extra almost and he would be leaving it like it was like 1 p.m and not getting home to like 4 a.m they they so really the same don't. amount of travel <clears throat> they don't like giving us good flight prices over here no definitely don't like i i know justin tries to avoid southwest like the plague but like that was literally his last and only option uh there oh, was that... any any logic <clears throat> southwest was the is the only thing i've flown in the past oh 20 years ish well no i won't say 20 i'll say 15 so, okay because that's what yeah. ryan and i took to anaheim because we didn't know any better i mean from arizona i prefer southwest like it's actually my preferred airline but we're <laughs> we're a major hub for it and it makes a lot of sense though i did fly something i flew alaska when justin and i just went to seattle and uh that has charging ports in the seats that was amazing. I had not experienced mm. that in a flight. Cause I, again, Southwest is like the most, for those who don't fly, it is like the most bare bones shit ever. Like I was actually on a pretty new plane this time. And I still feel like, I feel like a wing is going to fall off. It's not like spirit airlines level of like horrifying, wow. but like it, yeah, it was a thing. Dang. That's, um, that's a little scary. Yeah. It was, it was an all right flight though. <clears throat> okay. I think I'm done with my social media stuff so I can actually focus a little bit better. Hi there. Hi everyone. Um, Chris wants to fly all the airlines. Do you want actually want to fly the airlines, or do you want to fly with the airlines? Because there's a major difference there. He wants to fly all the airlines. 
Yes. Why do you so, want to fly all the airlines? Like, just to, to be an airline review person? Yeah, I'd actually be curious to fly on all the different ones, to actually do, experience, like, the subtle differences. I mean, when I was a kid, I flew Delta all the time. And wow. then um, it was America West, which became I, U.S. Airways. I wanted I think to became... fly Delta because they were huge when we were kids. Mm-hmm. Like, that was, like, they, the commercials were everywhere. It was the commercials, and you got the Delta wings. Like I, yeah, have... I mean that's what we wanted. We wanted the freaking wings. No, I have so many of those freaking <laughs> things. Those wings. I never got any. <laughs> um, I just I I flew uh, I to visit you know grandparents from New York to Florida like twice a year, and I flew from New York to Arizona twice a year every year for like my entire childhood. Get me some wings, Chris. Yeah, I, I still don't have any Delta wings. I do those. Even does that even still exist? Is that like even? I, I, I bet it's got to be. It's got to be thing for kids. Here, Chris, steal a child and go in Delta. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a weird I did mood, not people. Condone, I do not condone this Constant, plan of action. Constantly calibrating does not endorse the kidnapping of children for the procurement of Delta wings or for any other reasons. Please see your local law enforcement agency if you're considering kidnapping a child. <laughs> He's like, can do. So I can't confirm uh, what it specifically is, uh, but we've just like got our first sponsor. I haven't even told Brad about that yet. Like it's, it, we're, I'm signing the paperwork probably today, uh, and we'll announce it there afterwards. But uh, like we're getting first sponsor. God, I hope they're not watching this this preamble episode, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe they're into it. I don't know. So um, I I just got back from PAX as I as I mentioned. Uh, it's right six out. p.m. Pacific. I landed at nine. Actually, I landed exactly nine hours ago, uh, back home. Uh, PAX actually just closed. Like the expo hall just closed fifteen minutes ago, uh, for the final day. And yeah, um, PAX has got to be a little bit better on you though, since you don't have to worry about the time change. Yeah, no. So the lack of a time change is definitely better. I have no jet lag. Um. Uh, from the experience by any means it, so th- that aspect and i don't really get jet lag that badly it was it really was just a case of of exhaustion <laughs> gamers don't get jet lag we're used to crazy hours that i mean that is definitely uh i think is a perk of why i didn't get jet lag most of my childhood um <laughs> but a perk yeah um so anyways uh so brad and i are gonna just kind of shoot the shit it's just the two of us so we're just gonna do our like our shtick you know rambling about packs and maybe some other stuff if it pops up but so, uh, so I, I, w- I want to keep it under control. You just mentioned the the sponsor, which we can't talk about yet. Yeah. Uh, but but this was your first PAX, right? No, this is my second. So your I second did PAX, one. I did PAX West last year. Okay, so my this bad. Was, this is Justin's fourth, though. I will say so. Just like uh, something we didn't discuss in any of our uh, day of coverages, which are still not released because we didn't have an ability to edit. Those will be coming to YouTube.com/concalpod and Twitch.tv/slash constant calibrating this week. I th- I'm gonna probably start editing them tonight, um, and then we have a really awesome interview. Uh, okay, a-, a fucking amazing interview with Jason. Um, uh, shit. Uh, Jason, shit. No, no, Jason. Here, here I, I, first. I, I'm very tired, so my apologies, Jason. <laughs> uh, let me double. I just want to make sure I got, I got his last name right. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, bah, 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 bah. There, Jason Docton. I was a Denton. Um, Jason Docton, who is the founder of Anxiety Gaming, which is a uh, mm-hmm. a nonprofit charity that helps. Uh, it, it focuses on gamers, but it's really anyone to find a uh, therapist, psycho- psychological support with depression and anxiety, and tries to do outreach and and stuff like that kind of what we do with the mental health breakdown fridays <laughs> we were jason momoa we we were supposed to uh we were supposed to do a live mental health breakdown with him but uh reception in seattle is bad on a good day at pax it was <clears throat> useless absolutely <laughs> useless it's because um, seattle is the home of all the hipsters and they all have like five iphones in their pockets each I just I think they have bad connectivity. So um so we got all that stuff coming up. But uh, but yeah, yeah. We're, we're, why was I talking about? <laughs> I don't know. But now that Chris has derailed me, all I can think about is you doing an interview with Jason Momoa and just like staring into each other's eyes longingly the whole time, and that's all it is. I would totally do that interview. I know you totally would. <clears throat> yeah, I would. Um, if <laughs> Justin I interview- walks in, <laughs> Justin walks in and tries to interrupt, and he he just reaches up and goes shh. 
<laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, no, I'm getting good at this. <laughs> if I interviewed Jason Momoa, I would literally just talk about Stargate Atlantis. I wouldn't acknowledge Game of Thrones or Aquaman or <coughs> or any of the other stuff he's done. I would just talk about Stargate. Excuse me. I didn't even know he was in Stargate. So that's pretty much was where he got his start. He uh, he was. Kind of the token. No, I guess I, I, he was like the token male minority character on the show. Male was uh, how, yeah, uh, so, uh, kind of thing. So, uh, well, he was the just the, he was the teal character. Hey DC, uh, what's if up? You saw, if you saw, so, uh, so yeah, uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Um, I I don't even know where to begin. So, um, all right. Let's so see. what? What? Okay. How much has it changed? since last year is it pretty much the same thing you just fucking remind me what i wanted to talk about that actually just helped what i where i was going for so okay um it's pretty much the same event as far as the layout as far as stuff the fourth the fourth floor is like two-sided which is a lot of your your triple a games it's a lot of your um your your major your major properties and things like that some uh, major uh, peripherals and things of that nature uh the sixth floor is a combination of tabletop and uh, some of the indie stuff, and that's also where the PAX Australia uh, road uh, road show road show couldn't think of the word there for a second was, which uh, uh, I'll get to that in a second. <clears throat> um, and then and, and then that kind of things are, and then there's uh, there's stuff over at the Westin, which is where all the VR stuff is, which is like a five minute walk away, and then the Hyatt has. Uh, um, I think it was just panels over there, which is another five minute walk. And then there's a whole annex I wasn't aware of, which like upstairs was like the Lenovo gaming area and the, the discord booth and like a whole section of the fucking place I didn't know of. I only ended up finding it purely because um, that was where the media room got moved to. So I hear there was stuff at a place called Paramount Theater, too. And there was Paramount <laughs> Theater. So... We could never fuck. So fun note, um, on Instagram, I was posting, uh, you know, about the event all weekend. And this kid, two actually two different kids started sending us messages. The council calendar being like, hey, can you go get me those pins and emblems? <laughs> who, who would one of those people be? <laughs> no, this is two strangers really? on Instagram started messaging. Like, I just <clears throat> denied the, the, the thing. This is after you asked. Now, yeah, you asked for it. And, like, two other people asked me for it. Um... I, from what I heard, that was really a pain in the ass to get stuff over there. Uh, we never made it over there because of appointments, but except for like mm. that first day. Yeah, well, Dylan also asked us to fucking get uh, <laughs> him a pin from Monster Hunter, and it was like he asked if he had asked us that on like Thursday night or Friday morning, it may have been doable because of the media entry. I could have like made a beeline since we had no appointments, but the line for Monster Hunter was like an hour at a minimum. Um, most of the time. Yeah, I'm... <clears throat> and I'm then slowly, I would have actually had to play the demo to get it. <laughs> I'm slowly and slowly looking more forward to it. I got... <laughs> I thought I got in the Dauntless bit, and they know they want me to buy in. I'm like, no, I've already done that once in the past month. I'm not doing that again. Yep, I got the same thing from Dauntless, where I was like, oh, cool, <clears throat> I got it. Nope, I didn't. Good yeah, to know. Thank, I, thanks for I that. Clickbaity stuff. So, I reminded yeah. you of your topic and then derailed you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um... No, so, so just the thing, um... I felt the vibe was really different compared to last year. It felt just off. And I started talking to people and I, I talked to a couple of people who said, yeah, something just feels weird with the energy in, in, in the place. Like it just feels really down. Um, a few people said that. And then I even like when I was out drinking on Saturday night, I heard people discussing that. Like huh. what's up with this year? Nobody was able to quantify it and nobody was able to put their fingers on it. Cause it didn't from a visual standpoint, from a crowd standpoint, it was Pretty much the same fucking event, so there, there there was no logical reason, but just something felt weird. And even Justin, Justin, who's now been to uh, four packs, is two Easts, and this was his second West, was even like, "Yeah, something's off." Though we were both not just sure if it was us just being our you know depressed anxiety selves, but then we just we got confirmation from people that something <clears throat> felt weird. Do you think maybe it's just a general feel in the air from the current? Uh, a the situation world. the world or do you think it's something deeper maybe like behind the scenes with like gabe and taiko and shit 
No, I don't think it's anything directly related to PAX. I think it's purely coincidental that the vibe was at PAX. I think it's the nature of the world we're in right now. Regardless mm. of your fucking political opinions, it doesn't really matter. You, Everyone has to admit there's fucked up, you know, energy in the world right now. The world so, sucks right now. The world sucks no matter what side of any fences <clears throat> you're on. So it's... I, get, it, I mean, yeah. we got... We, we know people in Texas right now who are mm -hmm. fucked... Yeah, um, um, my friend Christina. Were lucky. My friend Christina was over, and we were literally going down the list of all the cities that are currently underwater in the world. And there's like 15 cities underwater currently across the whole planet. So it's and then you know California's on fire, Montana's on fire, political stuff, and it's just like yeah, no, I think it, I, my personal feeling is it was the energy of the world. It had nothing to do with PAX. And people um, wonder why we like video games so damn much. <laughs> it's escapes i mean jesus like it's like that's what it is um but yeah let, let, let's let's get into that so that, that that's my first like we have you put you put some sections here that's my first impressions yeah kind of of the event I, um to, i didn't to realize be fair, i i really thought this was your first pack i completely forgot you went last year no nah, no worries. that's why right, i but, had that there. <laughs> no but first impressions of the beginning of the event it works it still works like initial impressions that's kind of by saturday that's kind of midday it's how i felt um, so, so you, favorite, go ahead. <clears throat> well, you had a list of favorites from, uh, last weekend at, so, um, GameStop Expo, which, uh, was, was Super Mario Odyssey and Assassin's yeah. Creed pretty much. So, so nice thing about going to that, by the way, is I didn't have to fucking deal with most AAA games. I have played them the previous weekend. That's so really I good. could ignore that at PAX because the lines for that. Yeah. Uh, seriously, like it, it was, it was nuts. Uh, everywhere like square enix by the way probably had the busiest booth of all the booths um which what they have on display final fantasy stuff uh i i final fantasy stuff and um honestly i could not get over there to even see i i we went to a behind closed door stuff for for square enix um right. i i even i'm actually under um i may be under an nda for something <laughs> um uh uh that is loosely related to them i can't i can neither confirm nor deny um but yeah so there's like uh there's a lot of shit uh they had going on like in other areas but yeah i i don't know uh but i i have like a professional friend who works for them you know like kind of like not friends but you know professional acquaintance right. i guess and i went last year i went to see her and it was like so easy to just go up and you know, talk the shit with you know talk you shoot the shit with her and we had fun this time i couldn't even figure out where the hell she could have been like that booth was so insane um, but highlight of the event is this. I'm not gonna. I try not to show the fronts and face in case people's personal information. This is not even all the business cards I got from the event. Passed to me. It's nuts. My favorite thing, by the way, I think one of my favorite things is uh, the sixth floor men's room had a uh, folding table. For whatever reason, it was like a wide uh, entryway to the bathroom up there, and p developers had decided to throw some stickers on there, and they decided to throw some. Uh, business cards and stuff just because it looked like that might have been the use for it even though I, that may have not been the intent so i thought fuck it uh, on sunday morning i was up there peeing i walked down with it oh okay, yeah i just threw some promo cards on there i came back later i threw 20 promo cards there was one left on the table so i threw like another 20 promo cards down holy uh, crap so that's a my, really good idea though that was really good so my dream right now is that in a in a day, in a month, in a year, in a decade, however long that what, what no, I was saying like however like however much success somebody comes up to me or emails me or something is like, hey, I, I really love your podcast. I've been listening for a while. It's like, oh cool, that's cool. Uh and then and like, yeah, I came across your card when I was taking a shit. <laughs> or after I was taking a shit. Like that that is my dream. Like it it, it that that happens. I I kind of hope it's somebody important. That would make that would now that would make my damn day. Like if it's actually somebody with like some clout or something. Like yeah, I came across your show. Like I was taking a piss and I saw the logo when I was walking. I thought this is a cool logo, and I picked up the card. And then you know I happen <laughs> to just I happen to it's, listen. It's one freaking day. Peter Molyneux. <laughs> it's Peter Mol. I can't see Molyneux be having been at PAX, but you never know. Um, who knows what that man's doing? <laughs> no, I don't think literally anyone knows where that man is currently. He probably doesn't even know. He he, he has become goddess at this point. Uh, Ugh, that game. That game. Um, so your favorite thing is cards and stickers in the men's room on a table. It's, it's just it's like it, it's the it's the occurrences. No, like I mean, like 
th- those are some of my favorite aspects of the event. It was it was these rare occurrence kind of things um, and stuff like that. Uh, on a cool note, um, I, I guess friend of the show kind of thing. She's never actually been on the show, but we did an interview with her for uh, the website. Uh, Britt Brombisher, Blonde Nerd, uh, some people may know her as, and she's mm-hmm. now one-fourth of What's Good Games. I have talked about it on the show uh, that my goal has been to meet her in person. I didn't get to do it last year at PAX. She's a Seattle-based person, so I'd hope to. Mm. Um, because three and a half years ago, I was kind of emotionally done with constantly calibrating. Um, Steven and I had broken up our friendship at that time, and I was burned out. And I ended up just chatting with her. I don't even remember how, but I ended up getting a conversation with her. And she just said something that triggered in my brain. And I said okay i'll give it another shot kind of thing like i think she wrote an article that interested me and then i started talking to her about it and then i was like okay you know i I guess i could keep going kind of thing this is fun i guess i don't have to stress about it as much uh and i've just wanted to thank i've thanked her online right but i wanted to thank her in person because putting a name into face kind of thing is much better i was at a bar saturday night um and who walks in and i finally got to tell her that in person cool so it was actually just finally get that like that emotion out kind of thing was really cool and she was you know a sweetheart uh and then uh uh the another quarter of what's good games uh uh andrea renee was there and brit said oh you know this is josh and she shook my hand and she said you have the softest hands i have ever i have ever shook on a man or something to that effect and i was just like okay we need to put some sandpaper on your controllers dude the thing is, they're not super soft, but um, I was using a lot of hand sanitizer the weekend, and the hand sanitizer I had, I think, like, had lotion in it or something like that, so, because I don't normally lotion my hands, like, my hands are softer, like, you know, I'm not, a, like, a manly man kind of thing, but, uh, but yeah, so, I don't know, so, I, whatever, it was, it was, a, it was a cool occurrence, uh, so, that was a cool moment, and then, like, that kind of stuff, those kind of cool moments, like, I really enjoyed going up the escalator and there's Tim Schaefer, you know, want, coming down the escalator, like those kind of things. Um, uh, bumping into people. So I mentioned the PAX Australia Roadshow. Uh, Justine, who, uh, who, Kala, who was on uh, our podcast talking about wrestling. Well, we were supposed to talk about Australian gaming. We mostly ended up talking about wrestling. Um, she was on the show a little while back. She was at her first PAX West experience with oh, the cool. Australian Roadshow uh, with Surprise Attack Games. So got to see her in person. Uh and chat with her and hung out with her a little bit. And that was really awesome. Uh, she nice. actually got to be part of Paxlemania, which is, you know, the big PAX thing they do. Uh, <laughs> uh, she actually got to represent Australia as part of the, uh, what is it? Uh, the League of Heels, I believe is, is the name of it. Um, League of Heels. Wow. Yeah. So for anyone who doesn't know what Paxlemania is, just look, look it up. Justin and I talk about it. At, it's part of our PAX coverage every year. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, yeah. So... That that was cool, and then um, just hung out with assorted other friends, and just uh, yeah, those are always like those are always my big <clears throat> takeaways. Uh, coolest moment of the entire event is mm-hmm. it had to be the end of the event. Uh, okay. I have not gone to any games yet. Like this is a weird thing to realize. I'm not going yeah. to any games, and I will get to that. I, I promise. Uh, for people, but cool thing, Greg Miller did a one man show essentially on his battle with cancer. Um 5 years ago he missed he missed PAX for the first time ever because he had gotten diagnosed. Um mm. and uh which is really funny because I now know the exact date for years I thought this was true and I've never talked about it. He got diagnosed on August 12th of 2012 about 5 months after constant calibrating started. Actually yeah, about a little, actually five months, uh, almost to the day after. And st- I remember Stephen mentioning, hey, this great Greg Miller guy, you know, from IGN got cancer. And I responded back with Greg Miller can go fuck himself. What? That was the first time I that was the first time I'd ever heard Greg Miller's name because I was that was five years. That was now five years ago. That was six years after my mom passed. And I was still super sore about anything really cancer. And I and some reason just hearing this man's name associated with cancer, I had decided he was using cancer to become famous, um, even though he was already famous. Uh, and I had just decided, fuck this guy. <clears throat> I, I hate him. And can, yeah, it was. Can, can I yeah, say can, you've grown a lot <laughs> in the past five to six years? Oh yeah, no, I'm a far less angry person and a lot far less judgmental human being. I think we I, by a long shot. <laughs> but yeah, no, no, like uh 
when Justin wanted to do the, you know, the now, I guess, infamous interview where uh, he told the Tim Grant story for the first time, um, when Justin asked, hey, can I interview Greg Miller about, you know, he was at IGN, they were secretly starting to kind of funny stuff, really, you know, at that mm-hmm. time. He asked if we could interview him, and I said, why, why? Why would you want to do that? And Justin insisted, and I said, fucking fine, we can get an interview with Greg Miller. Wow. Um, you know, and I, because I kind of chuckled at him when he was on The Gauntlet, season two, from Rooster Teeth, and I thought, fuck it, fine, we can, yeah, sure, we, we'll arrange it, let's do it. Um, and then I fell in love with that man during that interview. <laughs> And I took back every every stupid preconception I I had created about him. <clears throat> um, Greg is one of our favorite people. Oh yeah, just to be clear, Greg is one of my favorite people in the world, and so is his wife. Uh, uh, something personal in my life is going on with my kid right now that I'm really not talking about publicly. It's it'll come up sooner or later because it has to. Um, yeah. but. I had made some throwaway comment to his wife uh, online. She was asking how people deal with like stress with their children because she was having enough stress dealing with their dog being sick. She can't imagine somebody dealing with an actual child. And I made some throwaway comment about a situation going in my life. And I was really like worried that I um, upset her too much. That was like, like made her believe that I was angry with her for comparing her trying to compare a dog to a child. I wasn't, mm. but Twitter doesn't really relay stuff. So after this really emotional panel Greg did, I talked to her about it. And then we ended up just talking about what's going on with my kid and stuff like that. And this woman who I've like met in passing uh, at RTX this year gives me the warmest hug and literally says to me, hey, when this thing happens, I want you to message me. I want to know what's going on. Uh, so the Millers are officially my favorite celebrity couple in existence. <laughs> Um, wow. but so great. So Greg did this talk. Um, I thought I was going to be fine with it. Uh, Justin can attest to this. I was a sobbing mess during it. I dug such a bad furrow in my arm that I was bleeding, uh, cause my nails are gripping. And, um, I tweeted last night, uh, after it was over, like a series of tweets. It took me 15 minutes to write because my hand was this, this is how bad my hand was shaking. I, uh, I was so so fucking distraught i cannot even quantify in words but that's gonna go down probably as my main pax highlight uh because i think i officially came to terms with my mom's death last night (laughs) i thought i already had but greg crystallized like the final piece of the puzzle for me in something he said um about what it's like to have cancer and fuck it it was a hell of an experience, and I will wow. always love and respect the shit out of that man for all time. I'm actually working on an email to him. I was working on the plane, so he's he is something else in our industry. He is he is an anomaly, <laughs> like but in the best possible way, um, of things. So I wanted to get the depressing ish <laughs> thing. At, well, we're in the middle of the show, but before we get into the games, so uh, games. So let's see here. Uh, what, ask me. Uh, so uh, ask me something, Brad. So all right, what, <clears throat> you said you avoided a lot of the triple A's. Um, you had some. Did you have? We, we had appointments for a couple games, right? Yeah. So last year we had twenty eight appointments for thirty four games. We ended up seeing forty three games by the end of packs. <laughs> uh, this year we had. I'm gonna look through right now. Let's see. We have one, two, three, four. Uh, da, 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 four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I'll, I'll count that's not a game. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So sixteen appointments for about twenty-three games. Okay. We ended up, I think, seeing thirty-two. All right. Um. So so. It- yeah. Go ahead. So, go ahead. So the, so it was. So the thing I'm going to say is, last year we overbooked. This year we underbooked. Uh, okay. The best advice I could give to any fledgling media person who as able or someone who's just able to get appointments at PAX. Last year we had too many. We were t- a two man team. Justin and I never saw each other because we continuously had appointments at the same time. I uh, I thinned it out this time, so we only had like three overlap points during the whole weekend, um, which also kind of didn't benefit uh, a lot of cases because that meant that only one of us actually got to play a lot of games, which was me in this case. Um, I almost went to random stuff. So, but. What ended up happening was Friday, Saturday, Friday was okay. Saturday, we had almost no appointments and we were bored out of our fucking minds because Saturday is so busy. You can't just walk up to booths and Mm. do stuff. And we had no appointments. We had three appointments. 
So it's like we had almost nothing to do all day. Uh, there were no panels that really fit what we were looking to do and, and that also fit our schedule for what appointments we had. So it's like it was a weird thing. So next year, I think we're going to, if we can go all four days, we're going to leave Friday and Monday open. And Saturday and Sunday are going to be heavy appointment days. That sounds like a good idea. That so, way we're busy. But go ahead. <clears throat> what are we playing? So Because uh, I so- know you had to find something that we're going to play. So what are we playing? So let's see. What 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 multiplayer kind of thing are we going to touch? Because I actually went for a lot of single player stuff this year. Um, so let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, but, well, actually, uh, I finally got to go hands on with Chronicles of Lyria. Uh, not necessarily something we were all going to play, but that was the. If you remember, Tom and I were obsessed with that uh, a year or so ago. It's uh, not quite. It's an MMO in the sense that it's open. Uh, yes, DC, Destiny 2. Yeah. Uh, but it's 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 like an MMO kind of thing, but the, the idea of it was, uh, Chris, I love Death Squared. I played the shit out of it. We uh, No, I, I need to play more Death Squared, actually. I uh, didn't play that this year, though, because I love it. Um, but what was I going to say? What was I going to say? Um, Chronicles of Lyria is a game where you don't pay for like a month of subscription. You pay for your <clears throat> character's life. And a character's oh, life that one, will the one yep. I'm like I was super hesitant about because of that. Yeah, so um got to finally go hands on with it, uh which was just like they, the, what they do is they they create modules because it's really hard to show an MMO off at an event. So right. they did a sword fighting module, the last two packs as they attended. This one was a jousting module. Ooh. Um just to give you an idea of the game, but it's a game where literally you do whatever you want. They're gonna let people in when when it comes for a for a pre-launch three months early because literally the players create the story. Um it's gonna be a very <laughs> role play kind of heavy thing. Um and your your environment creates stuff. There's no like quest lines. Like People can become raid bosses and stuff like that. I, I would, I would be the guy that walks around town the first day saying I'm the king, and then I'd get killed the next day. Yeah, pretty much. So, well, they did a Kickstarter. Uh, you act for people who donated it at certain levels actually get titles. So there is a king for different regions. There is a queen for different regions. There's dukes. There's stuff. I almost like went in for like a fucking title on it, and thankfully talked myself out of it. Uh, though I think I'm still trying to figure out if I if I went in for the the pre launch access level. But, See, uh, I would w- I think I would want to become like a PvP crew in this type of game, mm-hmm. and just go around and kill nobility. No, I would I want to be political assassins. Like I want to be like people who like uh, get hired by the guilds to assassinate <clears throat> people. Like that. I was talking to the creator of the game. I'm like that is what I aspire to. I'm like usually I want to be a bard or a bartender or something. What it reminds me of really strongly is Star Wars Galaxies, the original incarnation where Ooh. you just you you their skills and stuff and there's stuff that a rare amount of players unlock kind of thing, but you just kind of <clears throat> go off into the world and make your way is what it really reminds me of. Um, Because, like, Star Wars Galaxy is the original incarnation. A rare amount of people got a Jedi thing. This game's going to have, like, rare skills that you could be born with the ability for magic. And it's not... It's something you can theoretically learn. They're not really discussing it. But, like, one of the things they said is, like, a player can just be born with magic. Like, it was 0.1% of players are just going to be born with that. And they're actually going to be automatically hated. It's unlikely to happen on anyone's first character because they want you to be familiar with the game. Right. But after your second character is born and your stuff transfers over, there's a chance it can happen. And there's stuff you could do to increase the likelihood. <clears throat> um, yeah, so that was cool to go hands on with. The The pay model is what bothers me the most about it. If if it makes sense and seems fair, I could see giving it a shot. But like... So the case of that is, is they said that even if you're like the most klutzy, stupid fucking person in the world you and you're dying all the time... Um, you will, because it's not one death. You die and can be resurrected, and die and be resurrected, kind of thing. Um, so even if, uh, but it'll eventually get harder and harder and harder to do until you get permadeath, and then okay. pa- you pass on your traits to your 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 next born. Your soul gets passed to the next person. Um, but even like the most klutzy, stupid person is going to still probably be able to get like th- two to three months of play time um, out of it, and you're paying the same amount as you would pay. For a month of another MMO, so it it, it kind of balances out in that sense. And if you're really good at it, and you really get experience, and you really do stuff like um, they with their testing of how things should work, there's players who if they really get into and stuff could probably last 
from the start of the game pre-launch until they shut off the servers in a decade, you know, kind of thing, like, or whatever happens, just hypothetically. But so anyways, the game is, um, currently there's, like, alpha testers messing around with stuff. They're going to be releasing, like, a voxel-based map just to give you an idea of, like, the terrain and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, is going to go out to backers and stuff early next year. Um, there'll probably be a beta later next year, and then they're expecting pre-launch, hopefully in early 2019. This sounds so. like the kind of Eve that I would want to play. It's like the same kind of mentality as that. Yep. Um, and DC, as I said, so DC is asking our chat, that's super greedy. What if you actually fall off a cliff and break your leg the first day? You can be resurrected. So that's the thing is it just gets harder and harder and harder to resurrect as you die. Um, you're going to have to die like 10 to 20 times before you actually get. So essentially you get knocked out is what it amounts to. So you're going to have to die. You're going to definitely get knocked out like 10 to 20 times before that actually <clears throat> happens before you get permadeath. But then again, it you transfer it on to your next of li- your next in your family line, or you could go create an entirely new character on an entirely new continent. Like, cause it's going to be a procedurally growing world and kind of stuff. So yeah. it, it's really interesting as, 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 as a person who likes games with emergent storytelling and creating my own story. It, it, it just has, it, it's been a huge interest to me. The, um, it, well planning this for like streaming would mm-hmm. be amazing if if you have a crew that can sit there and tell your story and stuff or just <sighs> imagine like live action imagine like quasi live action D D almost yeah you know so uh so yeah um well, no man's was, sky was rushed yeah Rome, no man's sky was really rushed no man's sky was a triple a product um that should have just been an indie game like that's that's yeah. the problem with No Man's Sky. This is something that is in the same vein of creation as uh, Star Citizen, for better or worse. I'm not, in any case, I'm not like saying one way or the other. Uh, but uh, for anything like that, um, as far as multiplayer stuff goes, I I really did not touch on a lot of multiplayer shit. I'm like really, mm-hmm. I'm like just starting to realize that. Like, um, there was a cool couch co-op game called um. Uh, let's see here. There's a cool game called uh, Aegis Defenders, which is it was a uh, humble bundle is publishing, and it was um kind of side scrolling game, two player co op. You could play a single player as well. Um, two characters working in concert, solving puzzles, uh, side moving side to side, kind of jumping in and out of the environment a little bit. You shoot enemies. Well, mm-hmm. there's a granddaughter who shoots enemies, and the grandfather <coughs> who like builds turrets and stuff. But when you get to the end of the level, you don't have to protect something, and it turns into a tower defense game. Huh. And it was it was of the humble bundle stuff. It was the game that I was like, there was like four or five games. I said, okay. I mean, we're already up here. I guess we'll play it. And it was actually ended up being like my favorite of nice. uh, of what we saw. It was uh, it was a it was a lot of fun. It was really cool. Um, the audio of it was really neat. And yeah, it it was challenging. On it was actually pretty challenging on the normal difficulty, which was awesome. Uh, That's always I th- good. I think that is a next year game, if I remember right. Um, let's see is there else. anything that uh, caught your attention that's coming out this year? Caught my attention is coming out this year, this year. Yeah. So actually, well, on that same topic, there was a lot. One thing I really noticed with this with this PAX, there was a huge case of um, like with Aegis Defenders. I have no interest in this game, but it's at a place I'm already going. I'll check it out. So we made an appointment with Adult Swim Games because I wanted to make an appointment with Adult Swim Games. I like them. Uh, they weren't making appointments for Toe Jam and Earl, but I wanted to play that again. And they were showing off uh, Battle Chef Brigade, which was there last mm. year. Um, and I had zero interest in it. When they were showing off last year, it was like, okay, it's kind of like a cooking game that has has like a pick three bejeweled kind of element to it. Mm. And I was like, this looks dumb. You know what I mean? Like, And I, I watched the trailer and I was like, I'm not super interested, but I'm like, I like Adult Swim games. I really want to get to know them better. This is what they're really hyping this year. And they, they have a good pedigree for game content. So I'm like, okay, I'll go check it out. Yeah. Might be my game of show. Really? It, a puzzle it, game. Which, it's not though. That's the thing. So it's it's on the Switch and the PC. Um, it's story driven. The way it was described was an anime two D fighter pick three puzzle game with uh, with 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 a cook with, with a cooking thing meets Iron Chef meets Battle Royale. And somewhere like- in the distance, I heard my wife like screeching with joy, and she didn't know why. You know what I mean? Like, um. It sounds like too much. 
It does, but it's not. It is, they are all perfectly aligned. So the game starts off like your tutorial thing. You you play this girl, uh, uh, Mika or Mila, I think Mika. Um, very anime stylization. Um, you are told to cook a dish uh, of a certain rating. You start to cook and you realize, oh, I don't have ingredients. Um, so you run outside in their backyard and then it turns into this 2D fighter with a really good, like, but like an old brawler, like a final fight brawler. Really? Um, you run outside and you start fighting bugs and then you pick up their ingredients and their ingredients, um, are like Tetris pieces, uh, green, red, and blue, um, making a fire, um, I forget what the green stands for, probably, let's just say earth, but you know, something like that, um, and fire, or green, and water. Um, and then you come in, you you take them out of the pantry, and you put them in the pot. When putting them in the pot, you're slotting them in like uh, like a Tetris kind of bejeweled thing. You make the bejeweled bird, and then you stir. Stirring is you use, in the case of the switch, the right stick to spin the pieces until you make matches. As you make th- pick three matches, it levels up the ingredient, and it levels it up, and you keep leveling up until you hit starting level three stuff. And then you pick up the pot, and you bring it to the thing. When you run out of ingredients, because you can only hold six ingredients at a time, you then have to stop the Bejeweled style game and run outside and fight more enemies. Huh. Um, there's combo systems and there's magic and all this stuff. Um, it skipped ahead then in the story to the character like actually joining the Battle Chef Brigade, um, which is a military force of cooks. <laughs> um, and yeah, and... You you walk around town. You can buy ingredients and buy new pots. Like the different kind of pots are. There's different colored slotted pots that'll cook certain things better. So like the fire pot will cook red ingredients far better and far more efficiently, but it will not at all cook the other ones. So then you have to move your ingredients to other stuff. Then you take part in an Iron Chef battle, uh, and you're running in and out like fighting dragons and then making ingredients. You're on a two minute timer. You're doing all this stuff, doing this bejeweled game. And then you serve the dish, and at some point you actually have to make like dishes for like three judges, and it was one of the single most fun fucking games I have ever played. I and I'm not even this is actually in my entire life. I, um, Justin and I both were just like, okay, and you know Justin, if he's not interested in a game or a topic, he just tunes out, no, right? Right. He did not give a shit. By halfway through, he is sitting forward in his seat. Like, he was tired and done for the day. Done for the weekend by the time we saw this. And he's, like, sitting forward in his seat, did, enthralled. Did it Did it pat upon him? I guess. Like, he just it just pulled him the fuck in so hard. And afterwards, he's like, is this, like, an actual anime? Because I really want to see this story. Like, it, <laughs> like this is like, you know, it is the perfect fucking anime. If they could actually visually include the pick three thing, like Adult Swim has like the perfect marketing, synergy marketing kind of thing here. It is, it, it was so much fun. Um, we're going to be, so Justin and I still have to record our focus games though, for those who don't know this kind of content, it's our, uh, when we go to, when we go to PAX and these kind of events, we, we do focus games where we go deep dive on certain games and it's our games a show. This is all but guaranteed. It'll be one of the focus games, but this is probably my game of show. Wow. Um, I was blown the fuck away by how awesome it was. And it's funny is it's actually one of two cooking games I fell in love with <laughs> during the oh, event. When did cooking games come back? So, like, like there, there was a game called Cook, Serve, Delicious that came out, I don't know, a couple of years ago. The Charnel got super into it. And it was just a game where uh, orders come up. It's kind of a time management game. Orders come up and <laughs> you... You know, like, um, I need nachos that have cheese, bread, beans, and this. And you, like, hit their corresponding letters. You put it on, and you get it out to the person in time. Right. I watched her play it. It was a lot of fun. Um, Cook, Serve, Delicious 2 was announced, and I said to her, I'm like, hey, this was announced. Uh, it's at PAX West, and she told me she'd divorce me if I didn't go play it. <laughs> wow. Um, it's for anyone who doesn't know, Cheryl does threaten divorce a lot. She so really does. She she does. I don't think I've, I've gone more than, like, two days I, don't, I haven't got more than two days in the last 13 and a half years of her threatening divorce, and we've only been married for, like, six and a half years. So, like, I, it's... If it's she just, ever goes through with it, you're not going to freaking believe it. No, no, I, like, the paperwork's going to come, and I'm like, wow, she really went deep on this prank. <laughs> but, uh... Dude, where's no, so your the, shit? <laughs> the new game has a... I'm not going to go too deep on this one. The new game has a lot of fun elements to it. Um, it just builds upon the previous one, if you played the previous one. Um, and, um, uh, Charno and I are going to be streaming it. 
like guaranteed. Cool. I, I just got preview <clears throat> keys. There's no embargo on it. So we're going to be streaming Ooh. it pretty soon. Um, so it, it was a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, cooking games, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> so my other, let's say, let's pick another big game. Um, do you, do you, Brad, do you remember me at all talking about 11-bit studios game, This War of Mine, about two to three um, years ago? Is is that the one with the dog that told the story? No, no. So th- that was uh, that was Valiant Hearts. Okay. Um, so. so this was that was a Ubisoft title. Oh right, right. No, this is War of Mine. It was like it it changed characters a lot. And... Yeah, you had so it was like um kind of an ant farm styled game, like that side view, but it was a realistic interpretation of how a, a bomb that war zone. So you're a bunch of people in a house, like you're upgrading little elements, but. Um, everyone actually has like a despair meter in place. Like they're slowly getting more desperate and upset and stuff. Um, you could send them out into the world uh, to get supplies. You're literally just trying to survive day by day. That's all it is. Um, but to the point, like in my first playthrough, I sent the character out to uh, to a house. I didn't know it was in there. I I picked the lock right then. An old man like draws a shotgun on me, and on panic, I shot him in the head. And my this character then slowly slid so far into depression that he refused to eat and he died. Damn. Um, and that's the kind of game it is. Um, I had a playthrough where I had made it really far. I'd actually made it like well into winter of the game, and I reached a point where I was locked in with a save into a point that I, I that uh, one of my character had killed a couple people, but he had kind of like come to terms with it, but he couldn't go into public places. So I reached the point where this one of my characters just couldn't go anywhere, and I became I got to this like damned if you do, damned if you don't. Like this character has to die to progress the story, but I became so attached to Boris that I've never touched the game again since. Wow! Um, and then they added a DLC uh, called Ch- I think Children of War or something like that, and it added kids to the game. And I've never. Nope. Yep. Hard nope. Hard pass. Never touched it again. Um, so they have a new game called Frostpunk, which I think we showed a trailer off on the podcast before. Uh, I didn't really know what it was, uh, but it is a city builder, but Ooh. a survival city builder. Huh. So it's the late 1800s, the 19th century, uh, a new ice age is hit. Um, Dig it's, it. they start, um, uh, Clover Fall, Fall of the Vibes. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit there, Harwood and hello, uh, Definitely has a similarity to that. Um, it's the Antel style, but so uh, city builder post uh, essentially post apocalyptic, but you know in a steampunk kind of ish setting. Right. Um, a generator is created to warm this crater, and you're in this crater, um, and people are just trying to survive. Temperature plays a huge thing because again, ice age. So this generator is supplying a low amount of heat to the surrounding area. Uh, you send people out to get wood and coal and stuff like that. You have to keep getting coal to keep the generator going. Mm-hmm. You're not like micromanaging where you're literally like highlighting your people and sending them out. You just click on coal and you send 15 workers off to do it. Like that kind of style. Right. Um, people start asking you for homes, start building that up. The building system is a circular grid. So this, the you have in the center of the generator and then you actually build on a grid building outward. There's been a few city builders that have done this before, but the problem with them is... Um, you have to allot for roads and stuff like that. Otherwise, you're fucked in that kind of setting. This game, when you put a road in, and a road is literally just a trench in the snow, um, what it'll do is it'll actually displace the buildings, which is my favorite fucking feature I've ever seen in a city builder ever, that if you don't think about roads, it's not that big a deal. You can put them in later. Um, it has a deep skill tree with trying to research stuff. Research and stuff could be like a sawmill because your initial wood you find is just broken crates. Um, but there's trees. The problem is the trees are frozen. So you need to place a sawmill nearby. Um, and those are actually a limited resource. So once that happens, that sawmill is done for it because you would have to move it to somewhere else and rebuild it. Um, the coolest aspect of this game being the developers of this war of mine, it has a political system. Every, I think it's about 12 hours, you can make an edict. You don't have to. There is nothing stopping you whatsoever from from ignoring this whole system. But you can do this to to, to raise people's stats. Because what is this? Two stats in the game, or two meters in the game, aside from your resources. Um, There's hope and despair. If hope gets too low, the people revolt. If despair gets too high, the people revolt. So if you don't meet deadlines... 
those things obviously shift. Um, some of your choices you can make in the game are, do you build a child shelter? Do you choose to build a child shelter? If you do choose to, you are required to build that within like 72 hours. Otherwise, wow. people. Otherwise, you actually lose the positive benefit of saying you're going to build it. And that gives a place for children to be raised and schooled. The opposing side of that on that same meter is do you enforce child labor? Because this is the late 1800s. This is <clears throat> built with period accurate uh, laws and abilities and stuff like that. So do you do stuff like that? Child labor, kids will work in like safer jobs and things like that. There's another level because all of the laws actually then branch off. You can actually then make it that kids are required to work all jobs if you go that route. So very obvious. You build the shelter, hope goes up, despair goes down. You you enforce child labor, despair goes up, hope goes down, right? Being the people behind this war of mine, it's not binary, though, because there's other choices where, let's say, do you give people soup or do you give people sawdust in their food? So essentially Ew. soup makes them live longer, right? It helps them stay alive or you put sawdust and that makes the food last longer. The thing is, both of those raise the spare and both of those lower hope. There is no good option there. The stuff later on in the tree can potentially lead to good or bad options. But essentially, this game is just many shades of gray the whole way through. Like, there is no good really in this and the game um has a story it does it will reach a conclusion um you can actually get to a point that you can build essentially um a scouting balloon that allows you to actually scout neighboring territories as well i don't believe you can build there or anything but it's like sending people off on a scouting mission they come back with supplies wow um, that's this, this is, is a very depressed studio full of game makers yeah i mean no like seriously 11 bit studios make some some hella hella crazy stuff um but it's it's brilliant. Um, stuff like you can um, you can choose whether people get medical attention and uh, get healing, which will lower your war workforce as people get injured. Um, as Howard said, it sounds like the most accurate to real life game. Like seriously, but um, you can send people off to do that, or you can the the opposing option is fucker. You're just gonna work. You're gonna work yourself to death. Um, and if you go that route, I believe it was, you can start building different kind of medical centers and things like that, and you can actually start augmenting people later on on that skill tree because it's Ooh. a steampunk game. So you can actually have like a steampunk, like people can get mechanical arms and stuff like that, and you can actually make a really different workforce, which also creates whole other fucking problems. Like all I know is I sent like five different people over to play that game, and every person reported back that it was their game of show. Wow. Every That's... single person I sent over, and to be clear, this is a select group of people who are into these kind of games. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I know what it's... they're going to be. I, I know who I'm sending over there. I mean, we're we're seeing already in chat. It's not going to be for everybody. Uh, I no, think like, I could probably yeah. play, maybe do one playthrough, but I don't know if I could do more than one. Yeah, it it was a thing, but this is like a must list. This is my absolute thing. Eleven Studios had a lot of the cool games. Um, I'll send you guys over. Like again, we're doing a day of stuff. Those will start popping, right. hopefully popping up Tuesday. We talk about everything and at a loose level, so you get info on that. My other surprise of show was, uh, and this is just gonna like upset our chat because our chat is very well, okay. We have Destiny Two being a big thing in our chat, obviously with DC being in here. But like, these are not the usual games we discuss on on uh, constantly calibrating. But right. um, I played a dating simulator at the event. Um, <laughs> that is one of the cool in an innovative way is one of the coolest things ever it is so in the same vein as dream daddy it's called monster prom um Ooh. you play as one of four characters they're just i think just red blue green yellow um and they're just like different monster styles uh the goal is to take a date to prom um and there's like there's a few characters fitting all the different tropes there's a werewolf jock there's um an edgy demon <laughs> Uh, kind of guy there's um, a ghost who pulls pranks as like a bitch there's the the um there's the gorgon chick who's obviously vain and materialistic so there's like all these things what's cool about this game well what's one cool about this game is it has like 375 individual scenes and in a single player game you're only going to see 16 of them 
in one playthrough probably or like it, it's a very small amount of scenes because it's kind of i, I maybe i am almost 100 percent sure i'm getting the numbers wrong i'm gonna have to look it up but let's like, like but just like that could like that diverse thing so it could take you a while to see everything and there's secret endings if you do specific stuff and there's stats like you have charisma and intelligence huh. and your choices matter i said single player this is yeah. a dating game that's multiplayer uh, up to four player couch co-op because think about even... it. So think about it this way. In dating games, there's two ways people play a dating game. You're sitting alone with your glass of wine, your beer, or whatever, you know, you're laughing right. or getting into it. Or you and your friends are drunk on the couch laughing your ass off at this cheesy game, you know. So that's that's like that's how you say it. So they, they were looking at that aspect. So you can play it single player. But the multiplayer, it's past the controller. Everyone takes their turn. The thing is, whoever goes first gets like the first dib. So. You can only visit one one location on campus. Uh, each person can only visit locations once, and locations can be like a shop or it could be a stat boost or meeting people. When you sit in the lunchroom in the afternoon, um, uh, when you sit in the lunchroom in the afternoon, o- there's only six tables, so the first person gets first pick, et cetera, Because et you can all go for the same person uh, to date or different people, so there can actually be a competition. So they've created a multiplayer competitive dating sim party game yeah oh my god like, and it's with monsters and it's with like classic fucking monsters in like a in like that kind of anime style and the dialogue and the comedy is so fucking funny okay. like i was l- <laughs> laughing no what's the we cool thing this. people were going over there and the first thing you heard everyone say who they stopped they're like this looks interesting. oh it's a dating sim i'm not interested and then they would stand and watch and these people would be cracking up laughing and then they'd sit down and play it every single time it had one of the busiest booths of the entire uh, indie mega booth because wow. everyone was going to draw so the multiplayer way it works is you, it's there's no player 1 2 3 4 it's player 1 is player 1 at the start but then every turn afterwards you can choose the same order randomize order or competitive choosing which is a challenge. The challenge is, for instance, um, name a celebrity. So the guy I played with the two player with the developer. The developer said she uh, said uh, Miyamoto. I think I said Keanu Reeves. And then a question pops up once everyone's ready. And the question for us was, who would you want to lead you in a zombie apocalypse? And then you debate. Huh. And then essentially by committee, you choose who's player one, who's player two, who's player three, and who's player four. And it it keeps the game fresh and going. So all I know is, so it it could take anywhere from a playthrough is one to two hours, uh, I, depending on people. All I like, I, I was like, I kept telling Justin, I'm like, I know you don't like these kind of games, dude, but like Extra Life, my God. Oh, and it comes out, of course, uh, Halloween. Is it couch only? They want so it's couch co op only. Um, I. They're looking into also an idea, though, that I thought was really cool. So the only button presses in the game are A and B. Okay. I said, can you do Twitch plays? Where you have Twitch play one of the characters? And they're like, we've thought about it. This game, it might be awesome. The mul- I'd never considered a multiplayer dating sim, like, competitive style couch game. That interests me far more than the concept ever has before exactly like that's the thing is a a dating sim okay cool great great dialogue if you're like me and you're into adventure games dating sims are just the next evolution of adventure point and click adventure game storytelling but but this i have the texture and i hear my kids screaming right now uh but yeah so keep talking brad uh um yeah like i've i've never really had any interest in them like you you thought the uh, the the dad game was really cool um it seemed like if i were gonna play one i guess i would try that i don't know there's so many out there and they've nothing it's just never been me because you know i played the game in real life um it was Mm -hmm. it it was fun while it lasted but i don't really want to do it again because i gained nothing from it um yep but playing it competitively like you and four other or three other people are like, let's play this game. And you could be, you could set rules before you even start. You could be like, okay, we're all going for the vampire chick. Yep. Or, you could, you could set rules. Like your goal is we're all going for this person or nobody can go for the same person. Or you could like, there's so many things and there's so many different diverse ways to play this. Like 
I'm telling you right. I'm calling it right now. This is going to be a huge streamer. It's gonna game. blow up. Uh, yeah, this is gonna I've, be a big streamer oh. game. I straight up told the developer that, and like he was this shy, sweet guy. Like he was just so nervous. Uh, so I, I, and like there's there's a multi team, but he was the one who was showing the game off. Um, I mean, I don't know if it'll last more than a month or two, but it's gonna blow up for that at least a month. Mm-hmm. No, it, 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 it'll at the very least be a short fuse game. Um. Oh my gosh, that sounds so. Oh, so I want to play are, it. Those are like, yeah, those are uh, those are like my my big things. There's a couple of other games I really want to discuss, but I feel like Justin needs to be here for them. And that's um, that's fine. I'm gonna um, tell you right now, just for a tease, and I'm gonna have him talk about it next week. There's a game, Imagine XCOM, but with mechs, like the old Frontline games. Okay. Imagine that, but with a Nemesis mode. <laughs> yeah. There's a really cool game That's coming out. That's kind of funny because we just mentioned last week that nobody else has done Nemesis mode. Yeah, um, I got told about this game by uh, Evan Lottie of PC Gamer. I bumped into him, talked to him for a little bit, um, and he sent me up there to look at it. And when I got up there to look at it, guess who I found playing it? Justin. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, there's a lot of cool stuff on the horizon. Like All I can say is I'm super into the Switch right now and PC... There's a lot of questions, uh, but we're going to have to wrap this show up. Like I, yep. my kid is screaming and my wife and I had some stuff happen today. I need to go be with her. So um, we'll probably talk more PAX West when Ryan and Justin are back next week. Yep. And then we'll get back into the usual routine thereafter. All right. And we'll be done with like event stuff for a little so, while. All right, guys. So we thank you all for joining us. Um, be it the live reporter podcast. We're here every Monday. Uh, six. P.M. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, uh, twitch.tv slash constantly calibrating. Uh, you can find us online, youtube.com slash concalpod. We're on Twitter at concalpod. Look us up on Facebook, Instagram, like, and please like, comment, subscribe, wherever you can find us. Leave us a review. We appreciate you all hanging out with us. And uh, until next time, we bid you good sign off. <laughs>